2003, October 25th, um, a day that I won't forget anytime soon. Yes, indeed, a day that lives in the collective memories of San Diegans. When the Cedar Fire sparked this firestorm that destroyed neighborhoods all across the county. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I am Wale Ali. This map from SDSU shows the burn areas after the firestorm. The biggest area is the, Cedar, is the Cedar Fire and you can see how close it got to the coast there. Above that was the Paradise Fire, which started the day after the Cedar sparked. And below is the Otai Fire. As we mark the 20 year anniversary, Mike Wank of Kimberly Hunt is live from the Cedar Fire Monument in Lakeside. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Wale. The Cedar Fire changed the county forever. This monument that I'm standing in is dedicated to the lives lost. Twelve of the 15 people who died in the Cedar Fire were from right here in Lakeside. And within hours of the first flame, Santa Ana winds fueled the fire and pushed it southwest at an alarming speed. And this animation from SDSU shows the start of the fire near Ramona. By midday, the next day, the fire had already made its way into populated neighborhoods in San Diego. And to understand how far we have come, we do have to look back to 20 years ago. Here is our Cedar Fire coverage. It's a year after the destruction at the time, the lessons learned, the devastation and resilience, and the community of Crest between El Cajon and Alpine forever changed. The Cedar Fire set its sights on Crest on Sunday, and like so many other places in its path, the little community was defenseless. Some stayed to try to fight back. You know, it's sad to see these people with their, with their lives here, and it's all going up in smoke, and there's just nothing you can do about it. You know, it's just sad the way this whole fire's been. I, I, don't, I don't know whether we need more firefighters or more firefighting equipment, but, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how they pick and choose what houses to save and which ones not to. Uh, so I just came up here, and I'm saving my own damn house because this is my life and my blood. This is, this, is, this is what I am. Most people gathered up what they could carry and got out of the way. Many stood at the foot of La Cresta Road, and watch the glow in the distance. The next morning, fire trucks raced up La Cresta Road to battle the firestorm. Stunned homeowners still waited for word, and for some, word of a miracle. Your house and the house next door, the rest of them were all gone. So all the way to the top. How did mine survive? I don't know. It's okay. Then. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We saw it on the news where it was flat and pressed. We saw it on TV. It's the only way. This is what you got. This is what you got out with. Yeah. Yeah. Bag of clothes. The first people to go back into their neighborhood had to hike several miles. Only emergency vehicles were allowed on the road. Few found good news. This was the entrance to our house. It uh, had a walkway on both sides, went around a planter. <sighs> the anxiety of not knowing. That's tough. But we've been through it, and we'll get through it, and we'll go on. 277 homes burned in Crest. In this first year, just 20 homes have been rebuilt. Nothing has come easy. We couldn't Story even over. get help getting our debris out of here. We're still working on our debris. We're bringing people up from the Navy ships and the submarines, and they're coming up and helping us clear our debris. We get rural county to come out here twice a month to chip away our, we still have burnt wood on our properties. People will readily admit some of the difficulty is of their own making. Well, one of the reasons that people move out here is for independence. They want to do what they want to do. If you wanted to add to your garage, add a garage on your property, you built a garage on your property. If you wanted your mom to move up to Crest, you built her a little house there in the back, and that's where she lived. Well, after the fires came through, you, now you needed to report to the county. You needed to pull a report that said what was legal on your property. That independent spirit carries with it determination. David Thomas came back to Crest to find his house burned to the ground, and he resolved right then that before the first anniversary, he would be in his new house on his property. And it wouldn't have happened without the people up here helping and the peop my friends and everybody coming through. Another 100 house plans are waiting for approval. Crest will never be the same. 
there used to be a community of very small homes and older homes and if you drive around and look at what is actually going up it's the face of the community has changed I think that we're gonna have a great community again maybe even a better community it seems like everybody knows everybody now I met neighbors that I never knew and uh, looks like we're all gonna try really hard to have a better neighborhood after it's over Tonight, as we reflect on the 20-year anniversary of the Cedar Fire, we're also highlighting the tools and the resources that firefighters have available now that they didn't back in 2003. One of them is the new Eyes in the Sky Artificial Intelligence Program with CAL FIRE and UC San Diego's Alert California Network of Cameras. The AI can detect early signs of a fire, and it will alert trained dispatchers to verify that it's smoke and not just tractor dust or something else. The technology was recently named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2023. It was one of the tools that Cal Fire and San Diego County Fire Chief Tony Meacham brought up during my conversation with him recently. Even before we get a 911 call or our dispatchers recognize smoke on the camera, that technology is alerting us. The AI won't replace people, Cal Fire says, but it can help first responders stop fires before they explode. This map from Alert California shows that these cameras are up and down the entire state. There are over a thousand of them. They're from Six Rivers National Forest by the Oregon border, down through Santa Cruz, through LA, on down to the Otay Mountain Wilderness, and through San Diego County. And we're we're going to hear more about what has changed in the last 20 years to prevent the firestorm that we saw during the Cedar Fire coming up in my special report at 6 p.m. First, though, I am going to speak with the fire chief here in Lakeside about this monument in just a couple of minutes. Right now, we're going to send it back up to you. Wale. Thank you, Kimberly. We will see you in 30 minutes. Now to a